Isn't it nice when you can build a machine that does boring and repetitive tasks for you? That's exactly what I did in this video. Let's see what it is and how I build it. Recently, I got interested in a technique called wire wrapping. Chances are that you've never even heard about it. It's basically an alternative to soldering circuit boards that was pretty popular in the 60s to 80s. Instead of soldering, thin wire is wrapped around pins using a specific tool to make the connections from one point to another. This tool is pressed over long pins and by rotating clockwise the thin wire is neatly wrapped around the square post. This ensures a very good connection that contrary to what you might think, are actually more reliable and durable than a solder joint. Other benefits include that it's faster and the connections can be undone easily. The other end of the tool is used for unwrapping. My current project that I'm working on is going to require quite a number of wire wrap boards. To make all the connections I'm going to need a lot of wire. These will be of different lengths and to keep things clear I'm using multiple colors. This would require me measuring, marking, cutting and stripping all wires by hand and I was not really looking forward to spending ages doing the same brainless repetitive task. So I rather decide to spend my time helping future me and design a machine that would cut the wires at the right length automatically. My initial plan was to include automatic stripping of the wire as well but proved to be too unreliable. The wire is incredibly thin and for wire wrapping it is important that the core isn't damaged or it might snap during wrapping. I had an old 3D printer laying around that I knew was going to be perfect for this project. As the cutting tool I'm using simple cutting pliers that I already had on hand. The original extruder with a few modifications will be ideal for feeding the wire. I started off by opening up the printer and removing everything that I didn't need for my construction. At this stage I removed the bed to be used later as a base for the rest of the parts. The rest of the parts I designed in CAD software to be 3D printed. The 3D printed parts will hold all the functional components on the base plate. I pressed in some inserts in a few parts and started assembly. The pliers are mounted securely in a holder to keep it steady under force. The top arm gets a two-part cover. There is a spring that holds the pliers open when not pressed. I prepared the build plate to drill the holes to mount the 3D printed parts. At this point I realized that the material wasn't just plain aluminium. Whatever I did, my drill didn't catch and drifted on the surface, despite center punching before. Somehow the material seems to be hardened at the surface, so I had to change my plan. Luckily I had the whole layout right in my 3D design. So I exported the base plate and sent it off to be laser cut out of a 4mm sheet of aluminium. And there it is, no drilling even required. Then I could continue assembling the parts. Everything is fixed with M3 bolts and nuts. The cutting pliers holder is equipped with slots to be able to adjust the position forward and backward. The extruder stepper motor slides right in position. 
the whole assembly is mounted to the original bat carriage. On the x-axis carriage, I mount the pusher part that will operate the cutting pliers. Next is this part. It will hold a magnet which is actually part of a magnetic door sensor. It fits on the x-axis stepper motor to align nicely with the frame. Parallel to the magnet, I mount the reed switch on the frame. This reed switch is soldered to the original wiring that was once connected to the homing switch for the z-axis. The magnetic sensor will be used to set a homing point that we can actually cross above and below in contrary to the stopper switch it had before. Right now, the bed is still free to move. That will be solved by this part. It will secure the bed carriage to the printer frame. The wire spool is easily loaded and secured with a bolt. I also printed a catch tray to collect the cut wires. The printer runs all original firmware. Nothing has been modified. The programs are loaded from the SD card as standard G-code files. Those I simply wrote in Notepad as a series of standard instructions. The program starts with homing. A value is given to this current home position. This is a value we can go above and below. Next, we put the system in standby position. This is where the pliers are lightly touched and pressed in. Then a simple wait command after which the loop starts. We start with resetting the extruder position connected to the x-axis controller. Then we feed a certain length of wire by running the extruder stepper. After that we perform the cut by lowering the z-axis to operate the pliers. After which we return back to the standby position. Then the program simply repeats these steps for as many wires as I need. At the end, the z-axis is returned to a position above the homing point for the next program. Now it's time to see the program in action. The sequence is fine, as well as the cutting operation itself. The only issue here is that the wire tends to curl and end up outside of the catch tray. So I solved this by designing an extra piece that will keep the wire from escaping. A quick print on my printer, and there it is. Some super glue to bond it to the catch container, and it's time to try again.
Making videos like this takes quite a lot of time, effort and coffee. If you enjoyed this content, consider buying me a coffee to support my work and make more videos like this possible. Every little bit helps. Link is in the description. Thank you. That concludes this project. Questions and comments are always welcome in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. And remember, life is better when you build it. Goodbye.